All right, welcome back. Episode three of the Think Bigger podcast. For those of you that are just joining us, the Think Bigger podcast is a branch of the Think Bigger project. It is a brand and a movement and an ideology that is based on positivity, on stimulating growth and thought, thinking outside of the box so that we can all progress and uh, move forward together. You know, we help each other. That's what it's all about. So uh, you can learn more about it, thinkbiggerproject.com. That's home base. That's where there's a podcast link there, videos, YouTube link, merchandise to support the project 100%. That's right, 100% of the proceeds, for those of you that are uh, wondering, 100% go back into the project, okay? This is all about the culture, for the culture, for the people, so uh, let's go. Episode three is uh, is about what it really means to do your own thing. People always say that. Just do your own thing. Just do you, right? That takes a lot more than what people kind of really, really understand, I think, when they when they just say that. I'm just doing me. You just do you. Just do your own thing. Okay. We're going to talk about that. But before we do, what I want to do is we need to talk about episode two. Episode two apparently triggered a lot of people, okay? What's the point? For those of you that haven't listened to it, please, after this, take the time to listen to it. It is, um, it's one of those things, it's one of those subjects that I think what ends up happening is, is that it triggers people in a couple of different ways. I think what it does is some people, some people, maybe you want to call it intelligence, self-awareness, maturity, whatever it may be, some people, they think that it's so ridiculously obvious that they almost get irritated. Not even almost, they get irritated. They're just like, uh, what do you mean, what's the point? The point is obviously for attention. The point is obviously to make money. The point is obviously for fun. The point is, my, my friends, it is not obvious to everyone, okay? It's not. If it's so obvious to you, I actually respect and appreciate that you are at a point within yourself that when someone were to if someone were to ask you, what is the point of your anything, your job, what is the point of you getting up today, what is the point, what is the purpose behind your, I don't know, your car build, your whatever, right, that you have an answer. And, and the fact that it's so obvious and so simple of a thing to you is a very good thing. So instead of being triggered and, and directing that towards someone like myself who's um, conversing on the subject, take a moment to say, okay, wait a minute. That is not the case for other people. Other people don't know. And they're struggling with many things in their lives. And one of them is that, and they might not even realize that they just don't even understand what the point and purpose is to what they do. And if you look by volume at the responses, let's say on my Instagram, for those of us that are just joining right now, my personal Instagram is the big Mike, T-H-E-B-I-G-M-I-K-E, the big Mike. Okay, please take the time to converse with me there. If you listen to this on YouTube, comment there. Let's converse about it. That's what this is. This is a conversation, okay? I take all of the comments. I'll read them. It might take me a little bit of time to get back to you, but I am going to get back to you, okay? And what I'm saying is, is listen and and let's have a conversation about it because it isn't obvious for everyone, okay? It isn't. If you look by volume at the comments, you have people being like, oh, you know what, man, you're right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the purpose is. I need to think about that. Maybe that one or two sentences right there. Or you have someone who will write out a paragraph, okay? Some people don't want their uh, their thoughts to be public in the sense of a comment on YouTube or a comment on Instagram. So they'll DM or email or something of the sort, right? But if you look at the volume, you'll have like 50, 50 comments, right? And out of 50 comments, um, 47 of them are people like, huh, 
you know what, let me think about that. Um, I've never really looked at it like that. And, and they're kind of going in that direction. Other people are just like, I know what my purpose is. My purpose is this, or I know what the point of that is, or this is, and it is this. Okay. And even some of that is abrasive. They're, they're, they're answering the, the rhetorical question and they're answering it assertively, if not abrasively. And I respect that. You know, you want to answer? Cool. That's what it's about. It's about con uh, conversation. But then you have some people who are like, you know, excuse my language. Um, I know that a lot of you have messaged me and said to be a, a little bit careful with the profanity because you play this in the car with kids and whatnot. So I'm going to try to cut down on that, to be honest with you. So earmuffs, kids, earmuffs. But some people are like, literally, who the fuck are you to tell us that we need to have a purpose or a point? Who are you? Okay. So not only has the entire point of what this is about missed you, or you have allowed it to, now you're just on a personal attack. Okay. This, this is a response to life. These are responses to life and questions that I am specifically asked. I interact with enthusiasts by the dozens, if not hundreds per week. And then over the years, thousands all over the world in person and online. These are episodes on subjects about our lives and about questions that have been recurringly presented to myself as a person who's living life and experiencing things and, uh, and to the people around me, strangers, fans, followers, friends, acquaintances, you name it. So I'm not telling anyone what to think. This is about how to think, okay? That's one of the biggest points. The Think Bigger Project and the Think Bigger podcast is not here to tell people what to think or what to do. It is to teach people how to think or give them an option of how to think that is probably going to be different than what they're doing on their own. And that's what it's about, right? If you are, as an intelligent adult, able to sit back and look it over, and then you decide, nope, I don't agree with anything that man said. I don't know what he experienced, but my life and my experiences have led me in an entirely different direction with an entirely different mindset. That, my friends, is a success. You are in a good place. I'm happy for you because you are in a better place than many people. So many people are clawing at life. They are smiling. They are getting up, they are going through the routine, they are working, they are, for the car guys once again, they're building their car, they're taking it places, but they're not fulfilled, okay? They're not happy, right? Call it philosophy, call it being, you know, you know, a concept or a principle, it's that and literal. I mean, you literally have people who, if you hate Mondays, okay, if you hate Mondays, that's an example. Okay, why do you hate a Monday? Why do you hate your job, right? If you hate your job, then I guess that's the reason why everyone hates a Monday, right? Like I had the weekend, I was chilling, or I was able to do stuff for myself. And now I have to go back to work. I have to get up early again to get ready for work or all of the reasons that people hate Mondays. Come on, man. It's your job. It pays your bills. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if you're a janitor or not. You have a job. You're able to pay bills. You don't need to hate Monday, man. Because you, know, you really don't hate Monday, okay? Monday is just a manifestation of some other things going on, okay? So like I was saying, the responses to what is the purpose, what's the point, episode number two, okay, was so dramatic, okay? There are people who feel very, very uh, offended at, at that. And I'm saying it's not me. I'm not telling you to have a purpose. I'm really saying that you need to find out what it is and embrace it. So when you comment or when somebody DMs or asks me in person, well, I don't need a point. I'm just doing it for fun. I don't need a purpose. It's just for fun. My friend, that is your point. That is your purpose. If that's what you want it to be, you have answered your own question. Why do I need a point? I'm just doing it for fun. Well, that's the answer. So embrace that and then be good 
and and then be able to be happy that you're in a better place than others because other people the people who swear okay i'm just doing this for me you know i'm just doing me if you really are just doing you whatever that means then no one could affect you the circumstances of a car event okay a show a meet it can affect you because if you were really just doing you then why would it bother you if you don't win why would it bother you if you don't get into somebody's coverage uh, a certain vlog or blog might not take a, a or post a picture of your car and that bothers you and if it bothers you then just be able to admit, be mature, work on being able to understand what that means. It means that you're not just doing you. It isn't that simple. You have a portion of yourself has a competitive nature, okay? That's so strong that it turns into anger. And if you, uh, if you allow the competitive nature to propel you forward in life, that's one thing. But if you allow that to make you salty, that is an entirely different thing, okay? And that's, that's something that you have to work on with your, within yourself, okay? But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about just do you. I'm just doing me. Just do your own thing. So let's talk about that, for example. What does it really mean to just do your own thing, okay? It means that if, if not one person in your social circle understands it not one and not only do they not understand it they might not i mean i'm not even talking about not supporting you i'm talking about making fun of you let's say that you have decided after seeing enough things online after hopefully reading into it not just taking you know random things that you've seen on the instagram explore page for example but let's say you decide that you don't want to eat meat anymore Right? Maybe you watched a, a Netflix documentary and you got grossed out. Man, I know, dude, steak tastes good, chicken's bomb, whatever, right? No one's arguing that it tastes good. I mean, the, the vegans and vegetarians that I know that became that way, even they were just like, hey, man, it tastes good. Like, we grew up, pretty much everyone grew up eating it. And so not only does it taste good in the now, but you are, you know, biochemically used to it. It's, it's part of what you consider to be a good tasting thing. You have memories literally associated with a good meal, right? So is it really that hard to understand how difficult it can be to give something like that up when it's scientifically a part of you? Well, let's say you watched a documentary. Let's say you just, I don't know. You, you marathoned and binge watched a couple documentaries and read a couple books about how, you know, it's, it's damn near proven that eating flesh, which no one likes to use that word, they just want to call it meat, but eating that can cause, or many doctors and scientists will now tell you that it pretty much does cause cancer, okay? It's a whole different conversation, but if somebody decides... Maybe you're that person who's leaning that direction right now. Maybe you're hearing this and you're just like, yo, my friend or my girl or my somebody I know is, the, is on that tip right now, okay? If you're the one trying to do it and your friends are like, dude, are you serious? We're trying to go to In-N-Out. We're trying to go to Shake Shack. We're trying to go to a steakhouse. We're trying to eat, you know, carne asada fries or something like that. Doing what you feel that you need to do just doing you, doing your own thing, whatever you want to call it, right then in that moment is when it becomes hard. And if it was easy, everyone would just do their own thing. But people like to tell themselves in the world that they're doing their own thing, but they're not, okay? And let's, let's call that what it is. Let's embrace that and let's talk about it, okay? Are you able to just separate yourself from your friends if they're going to go out to eat? Uh, some things that you don't want to eat if they're having a barbecue or going out for someone's birthday. Can you, can you just do your own thing? What does that mean in this context? Can you go to the restaurant and order? Man, I don't know. Whatever you want to order. A baked potato and a, and a bunch of vegetables with, I don't know, something else, right? 
You know your peoples are going to make fun of you. You know people are going to be like, dude, are you serious? Like, what is that? Like, where's the chicken? Where's the, where's the beef? Where's the ribs? Where's the steak, right? Can you do it? And if you can't, if you are able to say, I don't want to hear my people make fun of me, are you able to not go to your friend's birthday party? Are you able to not go out to eat with your peoples and just stay at home and cook? Are you? Because it takes a lot, man. We enjoy going out. We enjoy the routines of what we love to do, right? So that's just one thing. That's culinary. That's dietary, right? Let's talk about the car, guys, right? I just do my own thing. You guys, for those of you that uh, are just joining us, you know, I am very deeply involved in the automotive culture. Uh, I am an enthusiast to the core. I have owned and built various cars, some of them for fun and as a learning experience. Some of them I had, um, um, even at a young age, I had an idea or a vision uh, of what I was trying to accomplish. But you're young, you don't have any money or as much money as you need. So it takes years to do it. My first car I got uh, in 2000, it might have been the summer of 99 to 2000. But uh, it, it didn't make it into a magazine until 2005. That's five years. In this day and age, how many people are building a car for five years and then hoping or waiting for that opportunity? They're not. People have a car for for one to two years. You know, there's a, a vlogs and blogs that you can go to a meet or a show and your car can, can uh, have, you know, some of these guys take fantastic photos, you know. And so you can have these amazing quality photos of your car uh, within months of finishing it all over the Internet. And um, people aren't going to wait five years. But what I'm just trying to say is, is I started off there and I remain within the grassroots. I communicate with enthusiasts on a one-to-one -one basis um, all over the United States and across the globe at events that I host, MC, and judge for. And at every single one of these locations, okay, I'm talking about Southern California, Northern California, I've judged events, um, East Coast, you know, I've been to events in Philly, Jersey, New York, uh, the South, Atlanta, Charlotte, you know, other places, Ohio, Marysville, Ohio, Chicago, I mean, you name it, right? At least once at every single location, to some degree, I have someone outright say, I'm talking about coming up to me or us, the staff of whatever event, the judges themselves, or directly to me, okay, and say, how come I didn't win? And I'm talking about they are mad, okay? How come I didn't win? Tell me, what is your criteria? Can I see the, 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 the way you judge? right? Some events is old school. You use a clipboard and a pen and a paper and you do like a points type system. Some events, they leave it completely subjective to us, the judges. We are hired. We are brought in because we are, are experienced in, in what we do. So it's subjective. We make the decision, okay? Each individual judge for each category, they, they make the call. Some of them use a point system. Some of them have um, digital, right? Where there's a, a, a template and a method to use on a program, and, and some things use in between of all that. But the point is, there are people who are like, I want to see it. Let me see my score. Let me see that person's score. Why? Tell me. And they're angry. Then there are people who are a little bit less abrasive. They're like, you know what, man? I don't agree with this decision. Can you tell me why? And they're actually asking in a respectable fashion. Okay? Now, if everyone was just doing them, I'm just doing me, man. I just build my car for me. It's just for fun. How angry is it when we've gotten emails after an event? How come our team didn't win best team? How come my friend's car didn't beat this car? These are real life events, real conversations, real confrontations about that. But everyone swears that they're just doing it for themselves. I'm just doing me. I'm doing my own thing. Okay, so this is where 
in the Think Bigger Project, the Think Bigger Podcast, one of the biggest and most important things is self-awareness. You have to know yourself. And that takes maturity. It takes sitting back and thinking, maybe I need to open my mind. Maybe I need to, to think bigger and, and give this ideology a, a chance. Let me listen to my, my friend, my older brother, cousin, parent, okay? Maybe they know something I don't. Or uh, let me tune into this podcast. Let me go to this, to this event. Whatever. Cars, self-help, entrepreneurial, fitness. It doesn't matter. This is about knowing who you are. Because knowing who you are, it'll help you know where you are within yourself, within your mind, and how you might need to, to be able to swallow your pride and say, I might be able to benefit by looking around me, okay? Like we were talking about in the comments, the people who got triggered from episode two. You know, if you look at 50 comments and 47 of them are like, man, this is my purpose. My father taught me this. We were in the garage together and the car got retired and I want to do him proud. And I want to, okay, beautiful, right? Another one will be like, my point is to build something and leave it to my kid. Okay. Another one is I'm having fun to just show my hard work. Okay. Another one. I'm just learning. I know I watch YouTube tutorials. A couple of friends come over. We crack some beers and we all just figure it out. Like we never had to compress a spring before. And we almost killed ourselves trying to do it without an actual spring compressor. And we all had to jump out of the way because the spring was going to fire off and take one of our heads off. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, if, that, if that's what it is. If that's what it is and you're able to embrace that, cool. You have... 50 comments, 47 of them are variations, and you have three dudes in there. Who the fuck are you? You're a douche. Who are you to tell people they need a purpose? My friend, stop for a second and look around you, okay? It's not about right or wrong, but just take the time to look at how everyone else is reacting and at least allow yourself to contemplate the fact that you might be an asshole. You might be a douchebag. Instead of calling me or someone else who says something that you don't agree with something, just stop and think to yourself, I think I got it right and they all have it wrong. If that's how it is, there it is, self-awareness. Self-awareness, you know who you are and that's how you can be who you are and do your own thing. But let's be honest, okay? There's another post, 76 comments the last time I checked, and about seven of them are negative. I mean, do you think that 70, you know, 70 other people got it wrong and you have it right? That they're able to, to have a conversation with each other and me about a subject and we're all, you know, going back and forth about ideas and this is what I think and what do you think? Well, this is what I went through. And you're over there like, man, you're, you're an asshole. Um, nah, man, you might be an asshole. And if you want to be an asshole, that's cool, man. Own it. That's what I always say. Own it. Be who you are. That's what this is all about. Do your own thing. But what does it really mean for the people that are struggling, for the, for the people who are maybe younger and they're trying to understand, what does it really mean to do your own thing? What does it mean? Is it means that sometimes you're going to have to separate yourself from people. It means that sometimes we are going to be by ourselves. It means that if you have a, a, a gym partner or a homie who's like, yo, let's go but they're on their phone a little too much or a lot too much. They talk too much and it's more fun. And like, you know, you're in the, you end up having a social event rather than a workout session. If you understand that that might not be the best and for you to do your thing, your own thing, which is I'm trying to really lose weight. I'm trying to build muscle. I'm trying to, to run more and your friend hates running or has an injury and doesn't want to play basketball, but you want to go there and you want to hoop or, you know what I'm saying? This is applicable to anything, guys, anything. It means that you might need to separate yourself 
from the uh, factors that take away from what your goal is. And a lot of times that ends up being people, okay? And it's a very difficult thing because you love those people. They're your friends. But you need to learn how to allocate your time. You need to learn what things are good, you know, for you. So a classic saying that uh, really comes to mind often is just because something is good to you doesn't mean it's good for you. Let's apply that to people. Just because someone is good to you doesn't mean they're good for you. Does that resonate? Do you guys understand what that means? That means that if you are able to sit back and realize that hanging out with this person or this group of people, they're good to me. They invite me places. We laugh. We have a good time. They are good to me, but are they good for me? If you grow to a point where you want to do other things, those people are not even necessarily bad people. But if they, even though they're good to you, if they are not good for you, if being around people makes you say or do things that you're trying to stop doing, anything, the way you eat, smoking, drinking, cursing, anything, if you can stop and you need to and check yourself, we all need to check ourselves daily, moment by moment. Okay, it's a process. It's not like some person just gets it and that's it. No, we're all maturing and growing as people, right? But that takes being objective and, and being able to look around you and listen, observe, and reevaluate yourself and make an adjustment. Or you might not make an adjustment. You might evaluate around you and say, uh, I'm good. I think that I've got it down. Okay? But that's an entirely different thing than saying, who are you? Who is that guy? Who is that person? Who is this channel? Who is that page? And let me go argue with them. No, man. Okay? But, but if someone or something, even if they're good to you, but they're not good for you and for your, your new goals and new level, there's going to take a certain amount of, of balls that you're going to have to have to separate yourself. Breaking a routine, okay? If your first thing in the morning was to get up and drink coffee with like three creams and six sugars and, and whatever, if that's what that was, or just, you know, three cups of coffee before you get to 11 o'clock in the morning or eating a bunch of like junk food before you go to sleep or, you know, binge watching the most ridiculous, stupid, nonsensical reality TV, right? If you realize I can do better and I need to do better and, and, and those types of things are, are something that your friends like to do or someone in your world wants to do those things and you've decided that you don't want to do it anymore, it's going to take a lot of fortitude, testicular fortitude, to separate yourself. And then the part that makes it even more complex is if they or the person doesn't understand what you're doing and they get mad, you're, you are offending or hurting them and now you feel guilty because you're trying to take care of yourself and then your your friends, your homies, your your significant other, they're just like, whoa, what about me? And yes, that's selfish, but I understand it. A relationship, platonic, non-platonic, friends, whatever, there is a give and a take, right? So you're saying to yourself, okay, so now this person that is important to me is saying, well, what about me? Like, this is the time that we spend together. Well, you have to be able to be adults and sit down and say, I enjoy spending time with you. I mean, I know there's some men right now that are like, come on, man, like this is really cheesy. No, it's not, okay? You, you need to be able to, as men, sit down with other men, other friends of yours, and sit down and have a conversation like this. If you can't talk to your male friends about stuff like this, then those are just <sighs> your homies. Those aren't your friends, and it ties into them maybe possibly not being good for you because they're not on the same level. You're maturing. It's not about belittling them. It's not about being like, oh, you guys are down there, and I'm up here now. Nope. 
That's not what this is. But if there's growth, if there's change that you're making that you believe is to better yourself or your your mindset, your body, your uh, financial situation, your life, if you tell your peoples or your, your loved one, this is where I am, this is what I'd like to do, and I know that uh, you know, we use this to spend time with each other, but I'd like to use my time and spend it with you, but just doing something else, or I'll let you do that. And during that time, I'm going to go do this. And then let's find time together afterwards. Let's meet up to do this afterwards. Having that conversation is so difficult for people that many people don't do it ever. And ask yourself right now, how many of you have a subject that you need to talk to with your family, with your friends, with your significant other, and you don't, you don't do it or haven't done it yet because you're scared that it's going to be a confrontation or you know in your mind that it's not going to go over very well, so you haven't done it. You are scared and you need to own that. You are procrastinating and you need to own that because you need to have that conversation for you to do you, for you to do your own thing. You shouldn't be stuck with weights dragging you. You shouldn't feel guilty. You have to do that's what we're all about. And a person that's good for you, not just good to you, is going to be able to understand that and either be a part of it or let you do that. And then you guys can maintain and find balance in the in the way things have evolved. Okay. What does it mean to do your own thing? It means being self aware knowing what that is that you want to do and then having the maturity and the 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 fortitude to go about doing it okay and it's not for everyone okay and you just have to ask yourself in this one situation or all of these situations i know things are coming to mind i know that when we think about this things come to mind It's not like someone has a magic formula. This is life. Life is not always going to be the same path and kind. There's going to be change, and change is hard. You need to be able to understand, my friends, that if you are going to do your own thing, sometimes that is not just a figure of speech, okay? It is literal that you will end up doing your own thing by yourself. You will be physically alone and many people are scared to admit that to themselves or to anyone else they don't want to be alone they like having homies they like having friends they like going out they like having a gym partner they like coming home to someone or getting cute texts and if the relationship isn't healthy if you're not having conversation about subject matter that is tense and difficult to talk about now, why would you be able to do that later? If you are dating someone and you can't have these types of conversations now, why would you be able to later when you're married? Why? It starts right now. Each person being able to do their own thing and then have each other is what it's about if you're in a relationship. But what I'm saying, my friends, is is that whether that relationship is a platonic type with your friends or non-platonic, your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your fiancé, right, your spouse, if you can't conversate with them, okay, by the way, conversate's not even a word. Converse is the word, and I just used conversate right now, so minus one for me. But converse. If you can't converse with them, that's a problem. And it's a problem for both of you guys. But what it really ends up coming down to is is you are unable or you feel guilty to do your own thing. And it's a complex, it's a complex change. It's step by step, step by step. So what do you guys think? I mean, tell me, truthfully, what do you think? 
you think that it's it's more simple than this? Do you think that it isn't that complex? Or maybe you get what I'm saying, right? But you have been able to talk to your people, your significant other, and you tell them I'm changing, I'm doing this, and they just get it. Okay, cool. I got you. If that's the case, well, then good. Go for it, right? But for some of you, maybe most of you, right now listening, I know that it's scary because there is the possibility that they're not going to understand. Or maybe you've already done this and you are by yourself. You feel alone. You're lonely. Okay? Well, doing your own thing is sometimes a very lonely path to take. Okay? Because sometimes that's not part of pop culture. That's not the status quo. It isn't what's in the way you, I don't know, dress, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you build a car, the food you eat, whatever. It's not popular. And when something's not popular, it is immediately taken as the extreme opposite definition. It's weird. You're weird. You're a weirdo. You're a, an outcast. Are you okay with that? Well, you need to learn to embrace that. Okay? It doesn't matter, my friends. You just have to do you, okay? There's people there's people right now who, who understand what I'm talking about. I get a lot of messages about it. You know, social media, I talk about it all the time, you know? That same technology allows us to be having this, this talk. You know, this podcast is using the same technology, but social media has people thinking that they need to go in one direction, that they need to build a car in a certain way. And, and they need to keep up with these pages or these people online that they know nothing about or that are basically a, a character or a facade, okay? It's not real, right? But you have social media. The technology allows us to have this conversation, but it also has people never feeling like they got, they got it right. I'm not in the right place. I'm not doing the right thing. I'm not enough. I don't make enough money. I don't have enough shoes. I don't own enough Supreme. I don't have enough cars. I don't own enough wheels. I haven't won enough car shows. I mean, you name it, okay? One of those, if not all of those, resonated for people listening right now. And it's okay, okay? Just be able to be an adult and have the ability to sit down and look it over. Think about it. And if you agree, if you disagree, if you understand, if you don't understand, any one of those things, comment, message, email. I will be somewhere near your city or country in 2019, okay? There's about 13 to 16 flights planned. Everything from West Coast, you know, Bay Area, Pacific Northwest, the South, um, from Atlanta all the way down to Miami, uh, New England, Boston, go down, NY, Jersey, tri-state area. I'm going to be all over at various events um, in the automotive scene. Um, I was in Indonesia, Hong Kong. Um, the UK, I will be in the UK four times in 2019, flying into London four times for an event. And you know what, that kind of brings me to examples, okay? So examples of people just doing their thing. Let's take, let's take that UK trip. That kind of a, is a good segue. So Mims Honda Day, M-I-M-M-S, Mims Honda Day, is the uh, UK's largest Honda performance-based event, okay? They uh, have one at uh, Santa Pod Raceway, which is uh, a meet and also drag racing. And then they had one, um, and I believe the venue uh, is changing. So uh, it, there was another one at Rockingham Speedway, which is a, a meet, of course, and then... Uh, like a time attack circuit racing. And then they have a MIMS Honda Day in Belgium, which is, uh, you know, a, a social event and a meet, you know, so there's no racing there per se. I mean, people are racing go-karts because it's held at a really, 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 really nice facility. Um, 
a go-kart facility with a restaurant and a bar and then this building that we use adjacent and um um and then there is a an event called japanese performance show which is held by the same person the point in me bringing this up is is you want to talk about doing your own thing okay dav the uh, person who is throwing this event is just him okay and people don't really have any idea how to put that into perspective but it's just him and uh he has his um now fiance who helps but it's really just uh, it's not a team. It's just a person. And through uh, the love of the import car culture and the community um, has has turned this into an event where people come from all over. I mean, I've met people at this event in uh, Belgium and then a separate time in England, uh, London. I've met people from Romania, Germany, France, the Netherlands. I mean, you just name it. People come, they spend time with each other. We laugh, we talk. We look at each other's vehicles, we take pictures of them, and it's just a big community. It's one guy who made this event. That's just an easy example, okay? And, uh, you know, po speaking of podcasts, all right, I've been a guest on a few different ones in the past year. Um, Christian from Can I Beat, he has a podcast called the How It's Done Podcast. Uh, I was a guest that he had, so shout out to him doing his thing right and then you have the no breaking podcast no breaking podcast uh he used to uh do it for the peterson automotive museum and he's had some fantastic guests on there and uh, i had the honor of being a guest on his podcast last year take the time to check that out how it's done um on instagram uh and no breaking on instagram and then you know um the uh, downtime with downstar podcast you know he's uh he's like my i don't know he's like my i feel like he's like my younger cousin or something you know this we have a good relationship and and uh and he has his thing and it's just him he wanted to do it and people would support or would not support and these people are doing this because they want to no breaking it's in his home he's got it set up and it's just him doing his thing you know um downtime with downstar he's got it set up in his place and he's doing his thing you know christian travels uh, when he actually had me on his podcast he was all the way out here and uh he's from the east coast he came out here to to cali and uh we um we made it happen and uh out here in santa monica so these people are, are are doing their thing. You know, some people have, uh, you know, a friend, a brother, a cousin, a group of friends. Doing your thing doesn't mean you have to be alone. But you have to be able to be okay with the fact that you might also end up literally being by yourself. It doesn't have to be that way. If you have good people, if you have a good network, a good circle, by all means, if they encourage you, right, that is a blessing. Embrace it. Run with it. Okay, but some of the most successful people in the world, okay, and we're gonna we have an episode coming up on success, okay. That's one of that is like the that is the word, right? That is the word. I mean, I always talked about how passion is the word. The other word is success and happiness. We're gonna talk about those things, but for this, I want you guys to understand. You know, sometimes you're going to just have to do it. That's what it means. Doing your own thing means being self-aware, being objective, right? Who am I? What am I trying to do? And it isn't like it's a one goal and you can't change that. We can grow and have life and circumstances make us go in a different direction, right? And if you have people that support you, cool. But if you don't, sometimes doing your own thing means separating yourself, getting into a zone, and just doing it, whether that means putting on your headphones at the gym and not talking to anybody, whether that means cutting off people that you think are just not in the same place as you. If that's what you have to do, own it. Be a man, be an adult, be a grown woman, and just own it and say, this is what I'm going to do. And sit down with them. If you love them, if they're important to you, sit down with them and explain it to them. If they don't get it, and if they don't want to get it, you're going to have to be able to just 
to just go about doing what you need to do for yourself to grow as a person. That's what it really means to just do you, okay? It's going to involve sacrifice. It's going to involve maturity, okay? If you look around and other people are embracing something or trying something and you're over there like, these people are stupid, okay? Stop. Take the time to think about it. If you come to the conclusion, no, I got it right and they all have it wrong. Okay, if that is your adult, mature, objective conclusion, I respect it. But if you just look around or attack me or someone else who's doing something different, right, you might be an asshole. Think about it, all right? And if you are okay with that, cool. If you're not okay with that, cool. But you know what? That's what it's all about, guys. It's about growing. It's about conversation, right? The Think Bigger Project and the Think Bigger Podcast is not here to tell you what to think. It's to teach you how to think, okay? How. That's how you evolve. You look around at the how and the why. Why do I do this? Why do I do that? Okay, and you can change. How? How can I get better? How can I be better? How can I help those around me? How can I help the community grow? And that's what this is all about. Stimulating thought, conversation, okay? If you're listening to this on YouTube, okay, comment. Let's talk about it. If it's on, if you, if you know my personal Instagram, you know, come check it out. DM me, comment on there, okay? And uh, we can have a conversation. If you listen to this on the website, okay, let me know, all right? It's on uh, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. Stitcher, Amazon Alexa, iTunes, Google Play. Um, and I'm getting comments and feedback from pretty much every one of those. So we're just going to keep it going, okay? Uh, I love and appreciate you guys, right? It's all about growing together and helping the culture and people grow. Thinkbiggerproject.com is home base for everything, okay? And uh, if you feel so inclined, if you believe that this is helping the culture, if you believe that this is important subjects for other people to hear, um, share it. Share it on your various social media channels and let's have a conversation, okay? All right, guys. I love and appreciate all of you. Thank you for your time.